Hi, I'm El Gavalo Virta, and I've got quite a lot of questions during the years about my Tokai Les Pauls, what models they are, what are the specs, and so on. So this video is about those, these four of my Tokai LPs. First, let's listen to a song I wrote inspired by Zach Wilde, <laughs> and I will use this guitar on the song. This is signed by Zach Wilde. When I, when I met him in 2005 and we, we played together, jammed a little bit, and he, he played with this guitar. So, well, you'll know when you he hear the song, kind of no rest for the weekend era. Uh, let's li listen to the song first, and it's just a single guitar, no overdubs, even though it sounds a bit wide, but uh, uh, let's listen to the song and then I'll tell you more about all these guitars and the gear and kind of the, the pro production I used on the song. Hopefully you enjoy. <laughs> Well, like I said, <laughs> just one guitar, I got a little bit carried away. <laughs> the playing was pretty all over the place, but I was just having so much fun that, yeah, whatever, you know, music is about fun. First, about the gear uh, I used. So the, the drums were, uh, I programmed those, you know, using a Tune track Superior Drama 3 and then, you know, multi out from SD3 into Logic and, and mix those. I played the bass, I, I used a Bullgrain Digital, Sense Bullgrain bass knob, and then there was another track, same track, but you know, I just copied that DI track to another channel and I used Softube's Marshall Murder One Lemmy plugin for the, for the clanky sound, a little bit of compression. And that was the bass sound. And the guitar, it was this guitar that, uh, this was actually my second 
Tokai. I'm going to go more detailed about the spec shoot, but the, the signal chain for, for that song and what I have now. So cable, pedal board, bus SD1 <laughs> into Marshall JZ Mehari 2203, the bad boy. I decided to use this because I recorded and done towards so much with these Tokai's and these amp, actually these two. So yeah, bad boy boosted with SD, then into my Marshall VX cabinet where I have Creedbacks and Marshall Vintage speakers. Today I was using a single Creedback mic with a SM57 straight to the edge of the dust cap and then SC Electronics VR1 ribbon mic directly in front of the dust cap. And then I panned those mics left and right. So they sound a bit different. It's 57 is like tang, and the VR1, the ribbon mic is, is really full. It kind of feels like how the cabinet sounds when you're standing in, in front of it. Alone, I think it's a little bit dark for, for mixing, but, uh, but uh, this way blended. So SM57 left side, and you're recently it's actually there. And the VR1 on the right side, and then I added a Eventide H949 mono harmonizer on the VR1 track. So, and just like two centimeters out of pitch. So it sounds like it's really wide. And then I had a, since the song, what it is, what it, what it is, I used a Overloud Yamaha SPX90 Symphonic plugin. You know, what Mr. Wild, Wild used to make it even more wider. And then, tiny amount of soft tubes tape echo delay and that was it like it's it's hardly audible the delay but it just because it was only one guitar i just wanted to make it make it a like a big you know chunk of tone so that was the gear single track and there was hardly any eq i just uh, cut it out like the high pass was around i think 60 hertz and the low pass 11k and then from the SM57 microphone, I cut it 2 dB out from 3.5k because it with, with greenback bass is a little bit harsh. That was it. It's exactly the sound I have now without the delays and, and harmonizers and the symphonic. <laughs> raw and nasty you know bulldozer kind of thing okay about the specs of these guitars many of you might notice this looks a bit familiar because my signature esp it's it's based of this so i pretty much sent these specs to esp that make me a similar but with a maple neck so this has a Mahogany body, maple top, mahogany neck, which I've, I've shaved myself. There's a little bit rounding there. Can't remember if I saved or it's just that because I play with this so much. And Goda tuners, they are, you know, standard, so no, no locking tuners. Ebony fingerboard, jumbo frets, again the graphite. Not some somebody asked me on the ESP videos why I prefer that. I think I replied that I don't remember, you know, 20 25 years ago, I switched graphite not to one of my guitars and I liked it. And I've been using that ever since, you know, if it ain't broken, don't fix it. But I, I guess it, it's so hard that the strings move kind of nice because I do quite a big bends and stuff. So they, they, they move because it's so hard material. So the guitar stays in tune really well. And the pickups are EMG 8185. This is just the one knob is missing. So this is the, and this is a sticker because on, on the signature model, it's, it's, it's painted. But these are really, I, I think I shaved the neck because this has a kind of like 50s style neck which is really chunky even a bit too chunky for me so i shaved this a, a little bit if i remember correct and then i just asked esp to you know 
make this <laughs> with locking tuners and stuff. But yeah, this is the the, the guitar I probably use the mo most for my Tokai guitars. It, it's just uh, really good sounding and play. The, the frets have been changed, uh, I think, at least once. <laughs> Guitar, please, nicely. And some chorus. My, my clean sound was and still is. I use one channel and I, I, I do the different sounds and tones with, with the volume now, with my hands, the way I pick. So one, one channel amp is all I need and plus SD1. Cool, so that's, that's that guitar. Then uh, let's grab another one, which is pretty much identical. This is a bit new, uh, a newer one. This is a uh, Actually, from 2008, because this I had this similar guitar, but at one show I was a bit excited. I threw it in the air and I forget to catch that, and it landed on our keyboard player's keyboards, and it, the neck broke. And then I was like, "Well, okay," and I just destroyed that. Then I, I just wanted to have it exactly the same, so I went to Musa Maailma and, and bought a similar guitar. These were, and yeah, these are made in Japan. Here it says made in Japan. So I think this was some kind of special run that Tokai did for Musa Maailma. Because this 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 came with a with a shaped neck and with a god of tuners, god of bridge and uh maybe even with EMGs, EMG eighty one eighty five I think. But uh as you probably have noticed I, I tend to swap pickups because EMGs are so easy to change because you know they're solderless. So for the past couple of years, I've I've had the 5766 on this one. This is also in standard E flat, like the the original Elga one. <laughs> And probably you hear the sound is a little bit more low low end, but it's pretty much the pickups. Other than that, these uh, these two guys are really high quality quality guitars. So just amazing, you know, build 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 quality. Again, mahogany body, maple top, ebony fingerboard, jumbo frets. These are original original frets i haven't changed these because like i said this is 2008 i think that one is like late 90s early 2000s so the frets have been changed at least once <laughs> Had the chorus on now. SD.
pretty much the same guitar. The, the neck is, uh, I think I haven't shaved this one because this feels a little bit thicker than on, on, on that one. Then my first Tok Island ball. It's this one. The flag. So this again used to be black like the, the others. And this is a, a bit cheaper. Uh, it's like, is it like two? I think I got this on the the, the signature kind of original signature one around the same time. But this is a. I'm not sure if this is made in Japan or or Taiwan or Korea because uh, this is a rosewood fingerboard. Uh, other than that, it's the same. And I remember that this came with a, a little bit of like softer metal hardware. So I, I, I changed code of bridge and everything and, and code of tuners to that. Because this was a... I think these those two are like LC85 probably. So this is probably something 65, 75. I don't know. But I think this street price is probably around 1k. But great guitar. And this had a medium frets, so uh, I changed, not me, but a uh, professional check, changed to jumbo frets, and this is a graphic nut, even though it, it's, it's white. Now this has 57, 66, probably 20 years this had, 81, 85, but now they each have these. And, uh, my friend painted this back in the day, and I, 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 I did the relicking thing like a couple of years ago, and it actually made this sound better. This sounds really good now. This sounds like a... It's the loudest of these guitars acoustically. Almost like a piano. And it has a little bit kind of darker sound. Probably, probably because of the rosewood uh, fingerboard. This is now in standard E, and all these guitars have brand new strings. I, I, I you know, restring strings and everything.
But that's that. I guess I said, but uh, again, mahogany body maple top. You know, only exception is that uh, it has rosewood uh, fingerboard, and originally it came with a bit cheaper hardware. So I changed to go to hardware with these a bit more expensive ones usually comes with. Then this one, this is the latest. This is from 2009. I, I just, I got this just before we recorded God's Plague's uh, revival album. And this was actually my main, main guitar, even though it has medium frets, which I don't care that much, but uh, this sounds really good. I've been, you know, I've been going to change the frets, well, since 2009, <laughs> well, I haven't. Just thought that I, well, I play with these, and then when they're done, I, when I need to change them, which is actually pretty soon, I'll just, uh, you know, put a jumbo frets. But this is a, uh, again, mahogany body maple top, and the pickups. Originally, when I got this, uh, this this had a, well, I'm also mama put it. EMJ8185, the silver ones. I, I use this guitar sometimes on Live with Shining also. But now this has a Seymour Duncan Custom and uh, 59 on the neck and Eric Studer from Music, a fantastic guy friend of mine, he put it a split, so this is a split for the neck, so it's a single coil. This is a, for the humbucker. So I have pretty much a 59 single coil and a, you hear when I put it to single coil, it's quite a, you know, hummy. And this has a rosewood uh, fingerboard and made mahogany neck, like your standard Les Paul standards. This, I have shaved the lacquer off, so it, it feels like those guitars where it's bare, bare wood. And I changed Godoch tuners to this one too, because this, this had some something something else. But the, the bridge, these are original, and I believe these are, are Godo or whatever they are, they're really good because they have lasted 13 years. <laughs> sound, you know, passive pickups and, and more kind of on the ro rockier, you know, slash kind of. Jakey Lee. But yeah, these are my Tokai guitars. And you know, Musa Maailma, the, the Finnish company that I've been working on being a customer since late 90s, they sell these. They're, the, I think, one of the biggest retailers in the world of Tokai and ESP guitars. So if you're interested in these, I'll put a link to Musa Mama's site. They have both English and Finnish version, <laughs> if you want to read that in Finnish. 
probably not if you're not Finnish. <laughs> so uh, the, uh, if I've understood correct, they, they ship all over the world. These are really good guitars. I have one Gibson, but to be honest, well, I mean, there's a reason why I use these. These and ESPs. Best guitars, in my opinion, at least best guitars for me. Hey, thanks for watching. Hopefully you found this interesting and informative. All the best. Take care. See you on the next one. Bye.